All right, so today we're gonna to do a quick update on where we're at with Ember and a quick start tutorial, how to get started from the box to filming and go over some of the setups that we like. So where we're at on Ember today is April 2nd, according to Ansel and April 3rd, according to Henry. So we're going to April 3rd. Uh, last Friday, we shipped the first six Embers. We're targeting to ship between 10 and 15 units a week. Um, we'll start off with the unfortunate news first. The app has been delayed, uh, and I was trying to think of how to explain why the app is delayed, and all I could come up with was bad management, bad planning, and overconfidence. So that is why the app is delayed. Uh, we're working hard to get it out as soon as possible. Other bad news, the first cameras that are shipping do not have on-camera playback yet. We'll enable that soon in an upcoming firmware release. But as you'll see, the files are pretty easy to work with. They're, pro they're native ProRes, you just plug into USB-C, you can see them all instantly. So we thought that people would prefer to have a camera now and deal with these lack of, uh, what's the word? Features? Features, lack of features for a few weeks until we roll out a new firmware. But if that is not the case and you do not like our plan, just feel free to get in touch with us and we'll refund you your money and send your Ember to somebody else. Just let us know. Um, all right, so let's dive in. <clears throat> so we have all this ember goodness, and Dave has joined us today. Hello. One elephant in the room we should get out of the way as soon as possible is Dave has a small stain on his shirt I that always he's have really clothes. worried about. And so right here, you can see it. Um, Are you, is it zoom? Do these cameras zoom? Dave is constantly torn between he has this desire to look fly, but then also uh, reality sets reality up. sets in, and there's like Loctite all over him, and just, you know I don't so. have grease on my fingers. So anyway, good. on to ember. So this is what it comes in. It comes in this nice box. It's got this card on top. It's got some foam to keep it from rattling it's really around. The EVA foam. And then it's nice foam. This is the olive green ember that we are shipping out right now. Um, first units will be green, and then we'll be switching to gray. Cerakote, it turns out, is a pain in the butt to work with. So we're switching back to anodize after the first couple hundred. So if you want green. Your one and only shot is in the first couple hundred embers that we ship. Dave's gonna be building up the ember as we go. Uh, you can get those guys oh, yeah. out. Here's all the cables that come with so it. These cool little brackets here. Um, I thought I'd just go over, do a quick overview on the actual ember itself, the inputs, outputs. Um, so we've got power input, which is a four pin Molex. We send, with every ember, we send a cable which allows you to go uh, power input to DTAP. And the, the input range is 12 to 26 volts. So anything in that range can power it. USB-C, it's a 3.2, we include a cable. Um, you wanna make sure your cable is ultra fast because the files that this camera generates are enormous. Ethernet jack, this isn't currently enabled, but we have plans to enable it in the future. We've got this rear expansion connector. We're not doing anything with it presently but this is the fastest uh, super fast connector on the camera. So in the future, if we want to connect to a GPU or an ultra fast card reader or external media or anything like that, that'll happen back here with that connector. We've got HDMI, which I know everyone loves. A big, everyone's a big fan of HDMI, preferred connector for video monitoring and output. Uh, serial connector, which is a five pin GH or might be a six pin GH, can't remember at the top of my head. We've got this side expansion connector, so a handles and stuff in the future that we might develop can connect there and have camera controls, that kind of thing. Uh, Wi-Fi 5, uh, the antennas are under. This part of the camera right here is actually plastic. We Cerakoted it to match, but it's plastic, so Wi-Fi signals travel through it just fine. There's two antennas under there. There's a on-off slide switch. So I, I'm so sick of all products having to like double tap the power, hold down the power for exactly three seconds. But if you hold it down for four seconds, it goes into bootloader mode. So we just went away from all that. It's just a simple switch. That means it's on, that means it's off. We have this cool encoder knob, which has a high resolution magnetic encoder and no detents. So you can do all kinds of fun things in software with it, like scroll through the media super fast. It feels great. And then this is the select knob. So that select knob and then record button. And then these will light up when it's powered. I'll show you in a sec when we play with the real camera. Um, so why don't you get started on building that? And I'll just talk about um, a few of the setups that we use. 
Well, I'll kind of narrate both. So Dave's adding th these offsets come with the camera. And the idea is that these space the cheese plate slash battery mount away from the camera a little bit to allow airflow and all these cooling fins to do what they need to do. Um, okay, so I'm going to go over the setups that we use so far in Ember. So the, the main strategy was, um, you know, when we designed this camera, we wanted the connectors on the top. We thought that was super easy and best for wiring and gimbals and all the drones and all the stuff we use. Uh, we wanted to use NATO rail so that it was really adaptable and flexible. So we ended up putting long NATO rail on the so each side and then a short NATO rail on the top. And then this allows you to mount any and all of the NATO rail accessories that we developed um, to the main camera body. And I'll give you a, an example. Um, Hugh's been shooting a bunch of like BTS and we have this nice magnetic mount. And so when he's shooting stuff, he's been attaching his camera right there. And, sh you know, you can show the lens in the shot and you can show the resulting shot. So there's lots of different options. You know, maybe some people want to run a setup when the app is actually ready where you can run your phone right next to it. And then it's nice. You can pop it right off, mount it back on with the magnet mount. Um, so the, the NATO rail is really nice that way. It gives you lots of flexibility on how you set it up. You got those on? Okay, great. So these are just two ultra lightweight little brackets, which space things away from the body to keep our cooling performance. It's, uh, this camera generates a lot of heat. So that's one of been one of the tough parts is heat management. Okay. So next let's throw the cheese plate on there. Yeah. So there's main two main power options that we have for Ember. I mean, you can use anything D tap V lock, whatever you want. So on mine, I'm using our SL four and our power hub. The nice thing about this is this uh, will charge the SL4 100 watts, 100 watt input, and then it has 200 watt outputs. So you can power, it's, not, it's a nice accessory to have wherever you are, so you can power whatever you want from a battery, whether it's MacBook, iPad, camera, monitor, whatever. And then it's also got a DTAP output and a really high power XT90 to camera connector. Um, so the, the camera's drawing somewhere in the 40, 45 watt range usually. And so this battery will run the whole setup for around two hours. If you're running the smaller FX Lion battery that we have, you're going to get a little bit less than that. Maybe you'll get an hour and 20 minutes, something like that. Does that jive with what you've been getting? Something like that? Okay. <clears throat> so it just depends on how big of a setup you want. You know, this is, this is like a easily one handable setup. And then I would say the bigger setup that we have here, um, it's more two hands. So he's mounting the, this is the micro V-lock plate that we have in our store. He's mounted up to the cheese plate, kind of have to, it's this order of operations to get the, the standoffs mounted, then the cheese plate, and then this. And so with our current setups, if you want shore power right now, you would plug a USB-C with a high power um, power adapter into the power hub or you can plug it directly, let's plug this gold. You can plug it directly into the FX line. It can charge via the USB-C. So those are the two ways if you wanted to have the pe camera powered um, from shore power. So, okay, and let's throw, next up, let's put NATO on top, NATO on the sides. And so you can see green blink on the LEDs standby and then if we were to start recording, we'll get a solid red. And I'll, as soon as we get this one built up, I'll go through the whole menu and show you how to do all the choices you have and then update firmware if you want to, that kind of stuff. So this is the little monitor mount with the friction hinge. And then this is uh, the NATO, this is like a NATO general mount that you can use for all different kinds of things. So let's put that guy on there. So he's going to attach those two things. While he's doing that, I think I'll show this is for when the app is ready and you can run everything on an iPad. This is our big tablet mount and it's got, so it's adjustable. You can really tension the tablet in there, crank it down, holds it very securely. Same thing with the phone mount. It's a little bit more flexible. Just pop it in, it tensions, good to go. I love the, the magnet mount for my setup because you can pull on and off really quickly if you want to do stuff on the on the camera and then pull it off and do whatever you need to. This is the battery plate just to give you a feel for what it is. So 
three USB-Cs, 14 volt DTAP output, raw, raw battery uh, XT90. All right. And then two um, raw microfit four pin outputs with CAN. So these will allow in the future, these will allow these battery plates to daisy chain and talk to each other and communicate. So this battery, the power hub is kind of overkill for the camera, but we are going to use it a bunch of different places in the free fly ecosystem. Yeah, once we get this guy set up, we'll go, we'll run through the menu structure with that. Here's the Kipper tie, um, Revolva PL mount. And so if you did want to change your Ember over from the stock locking E-mount to this, it's just four fasteners in the corner. So I'll just run through the menu. Um, we got the, this encoder knob, super nice little encoder knob, super fast for selecting things, low latency in the menu. You can see which chain put a lot of effort into. So this is your status. And then let's say you want to adjust 5K to 4K. You can do those here. And then you can adjust your vertical here. So anything from 4096 to 4096 down to, let's say you want to go really 1720 and shoot max FPS. So you're over a thousand FPS there. And then uh, above this, if you go up, that's the user FPS. So you can dial in specific exact frame rate. So you might want to shoot. Um, so the thing we end up doing a lot is just going here and clicking max FPS to get whatever the max is for that particular thing. Let's get a lens on this. Just thought it would look nicer to have. Yeah. Actually see the scansel in the background. Okay. Okay, so now you guys can see what's going on back there. Ansel's. <laughs> Hi, Ansel. Okay, so let's continue on through the menu. So shutter angle, ISO, a um, little bit less noise in ISO 200, a little bit less noise, noise in ISO 100, but not a big difference between those three. So I think ISO 400 is kind of best bang for the buck if you need the light. Um, color balance, let me scroll through and select whatever you need. Uh, we're launching with Rec 709 and HLG Beta. So HLG Beta is a log, um, like a light log. It's as much it's it's as much log as we could get without making too much noise in the darks. Um, the camera right now is shooting ProRes LT and it's 10 bit. So there's there's only so much you can push it before you start to create a lot of noise in the lower levels. If you have a shot where you don't want the fan to be annoying like that guy is right now, you can set it to low, normal high. Maybe you're going to be working outside all day and it's hot and you don't know. The fan will automatically adapt. It's got different thresholds where it'll turn on to low and high to keep the camera at the optimal temperature. You can set the date, the time, um, format if you want to. You can select your uh, camera and reels whatever you want to set that up at. You can default everything back to um, stock if you like that. And then the camera settings that you last have will persist when you start the camera up again. Um, one thing I did want to show is how to do a firmware update. So the firmware update's super fast, super easy. You just hold down this button and then turn the camera on. You'll see this will start to slow blink green. And that means you're in firmware update mode. When you're in this mode, you'll plug in the USB-C and a drive will pop up on your computer called Ember FW, Ember Firmware. Uh, you simply drop the Ember, Ember Firmware into that and then click that button again. It's not gonna work because I didn't put a new firmware in there, but then it'll go through the firmware update process. <clears throat> it'll go through some blinks and then it'll start blinking slow green again to let you know that the firmware update's been completed successfully. So super easy, super fast, uh, easy to do. <clears throat> um, over menu, menu overview using the ember files so right now we're if we're kind of mobile we'll plug in an ipad and can view the files instantly that way also plug in just like macbook pro right to the USB C pops right up you can preview files grab them off there as needed um pc works fine too uh troubleshooting um there's not much to do on troubleshooting uh, every once in a while we'll encounter a problem where the ssd won't mount correctly if you reboot, it usually mounts correctly the second time. 
So there's a ton going on in this little box, a lot of complexity. We're improving the firmware almost every day right now. So improve a lot. Yeah, it's gonna, the rate of change over the next two months on the firmware is gonna be really high. Um, if you do encounter a problem, first step, reboot the camera, see if it's still there. Second step, check all your connections and make sure nothing's changed or anything's loose. Um, third step, get in touch with us and we'll, we'll help you troubleshoot or do whatever we can to help if the problem is not fixed by a reboot or simple troubleshooting. Um, yeah, it's pretty simple. Um, I think it's, it'll get more complex in the future, but for now, it's just a simple box with the super simple uh, menu system and very fun and easy to create awesome images with. So I'm excited for this thing to get in people's hands and see how clean and nice the images are. What else should you add? I'm excited about this thing. What kind of laundry detergent do you use? We use, it's, is it, is it like, I don't know. You don't know? I think it's a liquid thing that goes in the washer and it just doles it out. Do you not have uh, modern washer dryers? No, I do. Oh, you do? Yeah, you put you pour the liquid in and then it does the thing, but I didn't buy it. Oh. People were like, well, how did you get the liquid dish detergent? What do you first? think that was that you spilled there? Teriyaki, soy sauce? I think it was probably Chick something. Chick-fil-A? My Rip? guess is it was actually steak that I was um, eating that dripped on to me. Huh. Were you eating it in the laying down position? <laughs> Probably, yeah. Probably on the sofa. Uh, Henry, Ansel, anything we should add to this? Anything I missed? Oh, we, I didn't talk about this. This is cool. Uh, this is just an adapter that you can, let's, sh this is, here. let's pop this guy off and I'll show you. This is an adapter that you can mount in a whole bunch of different ways. So no say you wanted to have a monitor and a phone or a monitor and another monitor or a monitor and an LTE modem or whatever you, your specific thing is. This is just a way for you to mount even more crap to the camera. It so. has like a cool 45 degree uh, quarter 20 also. Yep. Even a, you can even mount it that way. Hugh was doing it. Were you doing it like this, Hugh? The Hugh setup? Like he had it mounted like that with <laughs> multiple monitors and phones and... <laughs> He had like a tablet that was specifically for communicating with his family set up. And then the phone was just for shooting and very, it was like a good multitasking setup. Um, I think we covered it all. Is that it? Yeah. There's just one piece. This is like a riser that you can use if you want to get the monitor a little bit higher up. Uh, there's a, there's a cheese plate. So this, this is the way the magnet now works. You can mount it all these different ways. And then it's got the nice mount for your phone. Which these, the, the, the aftermarket ones of these are actually, this is a moment one. These are getting pretty awesome. They hold the camera pretty secure. I was pretty skeptical of these things when they first came out because I bought Apple's well, your magnetic off wallet of and it imme <laughs> immediately <laughs> fell off the first time I put it in my pocket. So, uh, yeah. I think the, I, just before we started recording this, um, the first Ember got delivered to oh. was it a customer in California. Oh, they're going to be happy. Yeah, I'm excited to see what people think. We'll keep you updated. We're targeting to get 10 or 15 out per week. We're a little bit behind on where we hoped to be uh, right now, but we're trying to accelerate and catch back up. So thanks everybody for your patience and uh, we hope you love this thing. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, bye-bye. <laughs> Hugh, do you want to come say hi? <laughs> it's a good thing to say goodbye, right? <laughs>